A big gap in communication. Children are reluctant to communicate openly what they feel, what they're thinking with their parents. It all comes down to communication. A lot of the times the things that go wrong, it's not because of what we did, but it's more of how we did it and how we communicated what we were going to do. The kids think the parents are out to get them. Sometimes they will not take the initiative. The, uh, the elder people, the, uh, the senior people, the older people, the parents, they should take the initiative and ask them that, uh, what's going on? What do you need from me? The children's success heavily relies on the parents' interaction with them. So basically, when children get out of hang, it's basically, I think it's the parents' fault for not having communicated with them enough in their childhood and stuff like that. The biggest problem is the lack of communication. They speak English, but they don't speak American like we do. Parents don't understand us, and we can't really understand our parents because of their cultural backgrounds. They've got two Facebook accounts, one for their parents, one for their friends, and there isn't that connect. They try to, they try to just be disciplinarians and not friends to some extent. My parents were uh, raised in Pakistan, and then they come over here. It's a completely different situation than being raised in America and dealing with the problems of today. My parents were raised in countries and societies where the norms were completely different. And even if they were raised here in the U.S., the technology has changed so much and the accessibility to so many haram things has changed that it's just easier for kids to do wrong. And what's become the norm is the wrong. Parents are on the side where everything we do is wrong, and that's the impression we get when we speak to them. But honestly, they don't understand the pressures we're facing because they haven't been raised in this culture, but at the same time, we don't appreciate what they're saying because they're not from this culture. So there's that cultural divide. It's expectations. Kids have expectations of the parents that the parents don't agree with. Parents have expectations of the kids that the kids don't agree with. Constantly being compared to older or younger siblings that they have, and parents always compare them to them and uh, think that they're supposed to live up to their standards uh, academically and morally, and how all the aunties um, look at the other siblings and think that they're better and more religious. And so um, the child feels bad. As far as parents are concerned, they're always putting unrealistic, or many times putting unrealistic expectations on their kids. And they don't acknowledge their kids' accomplishments, but are very quick to accomplish or acknowledge their kids' failures and remind them of them constantly. So it creates a very unhealthy environment at home where the child is constantly being told what they're not doing and they're not given an, a healthy opportunity to present what, what their problems are. just be lenient, spend more time with them, go to their sports games. That makes the kids happy. They, that shows that the parents really care, you know. I'm not saying that a lot of parents don't care, but they, they just don't show it. They need to show it where the kids could understand because these are kids, you know. They should actually have a, a friendship or a bond with their kids rather than this always being, you know, the strict parent over them. They should know how to relate to their parents and relate to their kids. Yeah. Look at the life of the Prophet and you see how he interacted with the youth. For example, when Rasulullah used to pray, he used to pick up his granddaughter, Abu Mamana, and he would pick her up. He would play with Hassan and uh, Hassan and Hussein. He would kiss them and he would play with them. So he would show his love and care to uh, to the to his nephew and his, his grandson and Abdul bin Masood, Ibn Abbas, or the Allah on him. These are all, you know, great Sahaba, but nevertheless the Prophet was very merciful. So all this month I mentioned in the Quran, you know, and the character of the Prophet was that had you been harsh with the people, you'd see the people running away from him, you know. But it was out of the mercy of Allah that you were gentle and kind with the people, you know. So it's it's it's, it's very important that the parents and the kids that have this friendship and this bond have that trust and love with each other. And being lenient, being too lenient is not good, and being too harsh is not good. But yeah. having that middle path and drawing the way for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people that are actually doing good things, they have to do it, um, they do it because their parents are saying it. And sometimes they want to do it because, they want to do it for Allah, but their parents keep uh, keep up with them so much that they they have to keep them happy and they have to keep them updated to tell them what good they're doing. When we do good things, that we should do them for Allah and not for our parents. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah.
الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله سبحان الله الحمد لله الحمد لله